So next we want to talk a little bit about why the fundamental theorem of calculus is true. It's nice to know that it is true, but it's also good to have a little bit of intuition of where it comes from and uh, maybe maybe have some idea of the proof of it. So I'm not going to be I'm not going to do a completely perfect proof here. I might wave my hands a little bit, but at least this will give you an outline of how to prove it and how to think about it. So to start with, we had better talk about what exactly we're we're trying to do here. So we need to have some function, so maybe some function f of t, and we want it to be continuous. That was a hypothesis on uh, for for both for both parts of the fundamental theorem of calculus. So we want to have some continuous function here, and we want to define this function a of x to be this integral from a to uh, let's say x of f of t dt. So again, this was another part of the fundamental theorem of calculus. The first thing that we want to do, so our, our first goal, is to show that a prime of x is f of x. So in order to accomplish this goal, we had better first think about, well, what even is a prime of x? And here we're going to go back to the limit definition of the derivative. So we remember that a prime of x is the limit as h goes to 0 of a of x plus h minus a of x, all divided by h. So in order to apply this limit, I want to first think about just the numerator for a moment, um, because the numerator is a little bit tricky. And before we even talk about the numerator, I want to uh, take a moment to think about geometrically what's going on with this a function and what uh, x and h plus or x plus h and what all that sort of stuff looks like. So if I have my function f of t here, and I'm looking at maybe some x value of a here. My a of x, as we mentioned in the last video, represents uh, the area all the way up from a to x. So if I've got some a and some x, I also want to think about some x plus h here. And so what I have is that a of x is going to represent the area from a up to x. a of x plus h includes all of the area from a up to x plus h. So it includes all of the purple area, and it's going to include a little bit more as well. So what I get here is that, uh, remember one of our properties from section 1.2 of the integral, was that if I want to talk about uh, a of x plus h here, I know that means the integral from a up to x plus h of f of t dt. I know that I can split this integral up into two different pieces. I can split it up into the integral from a to x of f of t dt, and the integral from x to x plus h of f of t dt. So here what I've done is I've said, well, uh, my green area here, that's my a of x plus h, is equal to the purple and green area. So that's my integral from a to x plus the area that is just green. So that's the uh, integral from x to x plus h of f of t dt. So Maybe what we want to notice here is, well, we said uh, we've got a of x plus h showing up, but we also have uh, this green and purple area here is a of x. So I can say that this is equal to a of x plus integral from x to x plus h of f of t dt. But then what I find out using these two sides of the equation here, if I'm focusing on my numerator, this a of x plus h minus a of x, 
Well, I can subtract a of x from both sides of this equation, and I find out that a of x plus h minus a of x is equal to the integral from x to x plus h of f of t dt. But if we're thinking about what this means geometrically, I'm looking at the area up here that is, oops, let's undo that. Uh, I'm looking at the area up here that is just green. This is the integral from x to x plus h of f of t dt. So if I want to maybe approximate how much area I have, I know that since f is a continuous function, the y value here at x plus h is not too far away from the y value at x. I know there aren't any big breaks or jumps in this function when I'm drawing it, so this y value needs to be close to this y value since h is pretty close to zero. So what I find then is that this area can be approximated by a, let's say, a Riemann sum, or not a Riemann sum, but rather a single rectangle. The base of that rectangle should have width equal to h, since I'm going from x to x plus h here. And the height of that rectangle should be approximately f of x, the y value at that point. So what I find is that this area here is approximately equal to f of x times h. But then if I go all the way back to this uh, difference quotient and I want to think about this limit definition of the derivative here, I find that a prime of x, which is equal to the limit as h goes to 0 of a of x plus h minus a of x over h. Well, I just said that the numerator here, this a of x plus h minus a of x, is approximately equal to f of x times h. So let's go ahead and make that substitution. Lim as h goes to 0 of f of x times h all over h. I notice that my h's here cancel out leaving me with the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x. But, uh, well, the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x, this expression f of x doesn't have any h's in it. It's a constant as far as h is concerned. And so this here is equal to f of x. Going back to what we wanted to think about, well, we wanted to talk about the derivative of a, and we, in fact, show that the derivative of a is equal to little f. So that's uh, a, pretty, a pretty nice feature here. And in fact, that proves what we wanted to show. So OK, so that was goal number one, uh, showing that a prime of x is f of x. Uh, goal number two is talking, about the, uh, is talking about the first part of the fundamental theorem of calculus, which is uh, saying that the integral is equal to the antiderivative evaluated at, at both endpoints. So let's go ahead and write down that goal. Uh, so integral from a to b of f of x dx is equal to uh, a of b minus a of a. Great. So in order to show this statement is true, well, we notice that we just found an antiderivative of little f. Namely, an antiderivative of little f is uh, big A. So what we get is that the integral here from a to b of f of x dx is exactly equal to the area under the curve. But by definition, uh, a of b gives you the area under the curve. Um, notice that what we can do here is we can insert an a of a because uh, a of a is exactly equal to 0 since a of a represents the integral from a to a of f of t dt. And we happen to know that anytime we're integrating from a to itself, we get zero out. So um, area under the curve here is a of b minus a of a. 
Now, this uh, isn't quite all of what we needed to show. We needed to show that um, this doesn't just work for the particular antiderivative, big A. It also works for any other antiderivative. And that's a part that we are going to leave for a little bit later when we talk more about antiderivatives in depth. But for the moment, hopefully this gives you an idea of why the fundamental theorem of calculus is true. And it's essentially true because uh, if you change x a little bit, then the resulting uh, area that you get is approximately uh, the value of, of the function at this point.